Well, g'day there traders and friends, market participants right around the world. You are here with James on behalf of Pivot Point Trading as I bring you an individual earnings update as at the close on Tuesday evening. Uh, three of the stocks in our top 12 individual trade list over here on the left hand side of my screen did, re did report part of me earnings uh, on Tuesday. They were Goldman Sachs, IBM and Netflix and they have all offered up some very interesting gaps which I'm going to elaborate further on over the next five to 10 minutes. But before I move into those three individual stocks, let me just quickly speak about the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ once again is doing its best to come back up and fill this opening gap, which we saw really kickstart the year 2016. You can see this big gap down over here. This was the first trading session of January. Uh, and here we are coming back up. We closed on Tuesday at 4,940. So we got a little bit of a pop up to begin the trading session, but throughout the day, uh, we traded on down, we pushed off from the intraday lows and we closed relatively or at least halfway into Monday's bullish candlestick. This is interesting because this candlestick pattern right here again indicates that we are going to see a continuation to the upside and the continuation of this bullish counter trend bounce. But what's most important right now again on the NASDAQ is your upside projections. All right, and my upside projections on the NASDAQ are up here at this gap fill, which is acting like a magnet. I've recapped this over and over and over again. And as it stands, we've got about 60 points to move on the upside for the NASDAQ until we essentially fill this gap. I'll be very interested to see the candlesticks which form around this 5,000 area. Now quickly, in terms of divergence, not only are we seeing multiple areas of negative divergence set up across multiple oscillating indicators, have a look at the Stokes, the RSI and the MACD again, multiple points of negative divergence. The same is true for the Dow Jones Industrial Average and of course the S&P 500. We have seen again a nice little pop and continuation to the upside, but the key to these three markets at the moment is the NASDAQ and what happens at this 5,000 area. Taking divergence one step further very quickly as I've just referenced uh, very quickly some of the divergence uh, indicators across those three oscillator settings or indicators, but also the markets themselves are not in agreement. We've got the Dow Jones Industrial Average continuing its upside advancement. It seems to have broken its primary bearish trend line. We're still not at uh, all-time highs. We have broken above relative highs. The S&P has just crossed above that declining bearish trend line on Monday, but the NASDAQ is still a long way away from it. So we are once again below the primary bearish trend line. We're still failing to recognize macro higher highs. We've also still established macro lower lows. So I believe once we see this gap fill take place on the NASDAQ, uh, this may be the top for this current dead cat bounce in the market. So that's what I'm paying attention to. 5,000 is the key. If we break above 5,000, now this isn't uh, most likely going to happen in one day's trading action. It's probably going to set up uh, at least over a couple as we see resistance build around 5,000. We still have a New Year's Eve gap, which pushes on us up, up to about 5,030. So, I mean, we still have about 90 points max to the upside, and that will also coincide with this declining bearish primary trend line. So keep that open. Right now, in my opinion, risk is on buying this market. Technicals still say that, look, the benefit of the doubt, pardon me, uh, in the long term primary trend direction is still to the downside, but we are moving into a very neutral sort of stance on the market. So it'll be interesting to see once again what happens over the next week or so, uh, especially with some of these FANG stocks, which are still yet to report earnings. We still have Facebook, uh, Apple, Amazon, for instance. Uh, we've done Netflix, obviously, that was reported today, and the other stocks such as Google still to come. So we'll see what, how they obviously influence price action. But let me just recap some of these uh, gaps which we saw. Goldman Sachs, I'll start with Goldman Sachs because we didn't actually see a gap. Uh, interesting earnings report. You can see the daily uh, price action though. Let me just remove this vertical line off my chart. We have what we call a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern, not the biggest volume surge, especially after such an important fundamental uh, release or at least the most recent earnings report. I still feel as though traders and Goldman Sachs are undecided. It looks as though we're trying to establish again a counter trend rally. Uh, we didn't see a major gap like we saw in IBM or Netflix. And again, the trend direction for Goldman Sachs, uh, including this most recent report, is still down. All right, We've still got a series of macro lower highs and lower lows. Uh, but again, short term price direction may see Goldman Sachs try and make a run back up to the, to the declining 200 simple moving average. That will put us in at about 176 maybe just shy of 175 up here, about 174. That would be a major back test of overhead 
uh, resistance, which once acted as support. So I can see this candlestick again, forming the basis for a run up higher. The problem I have, however, taking these counter trend movements uh, on stocks such as Goldman Sachs is that the market has got a lot to prove, right? Here we are, we're more or less back up at the 2015, 2016 highs, where it's sort of a, a stone's throw away from the Dow Jones uh, you know, being up and reclaiming about 18,300, I'd still be shocked in many ways to see that happen. Same with the S&P breaking above 2,130, give or take a couple of points. And the NASDAQ, and because of that and, and, and my stance on risk at the moment, I'm struggling to find enough conviction to actually jump into any of these continuation types of trades, uh, such as Goldman Sachs. This indicates, again, this long day candlestick indicates continued strength. But again, markets can turn on a dime, especially given the location where we are currently trading at. It seems as though once again, we've broken the 100. We are above the exponential moving averages. That's not really telling a loss. It's saying uh, to us that the short-term trend direction is non-existent. We are moving sideways. And generally, when that's the case, we look at the oscillators just to confirm which direction they are heading in. And again, they are somewhat bullish, but we're seeing these crosses actually take place from the center line. So we're not getting true, nice, uh, strong, bullish crosses from oversold areas we're getting them from really this midway point and it seems to keep fizzling so when we push back up into these resistance areas we keep pushing back down and when we come back into these support areas we keep seeing these short-term pops to the upside which again ultimately fail be interesting to see if we do see continuation to the upside it isn't a trade however that i'll be chasing However, there is a good uh, probability at least that we will see a dash. I'm not sure how long, especially if these markets hold up up to about 175 on Goldman Sachs, but I personally will not be trading at. What I prefer in terms of trading earnings reports is to see sizable gaps, right? Because gaps are really important in the world of technical trading. If I just remove these vertical lines off my screen, let me just address this for IBM. So when we talk about gaps, we have to identify what type of gap it is. And what this is looking to be is definitely a reversal type of gap. Uh, reversal gaps are really explained by there's no warning when the gap actually happens. And when we gap in that direction, it should occur on decent volume and we should expect prices to continue in the direction of the open window. Well, the open window is bearish. We've got no warning signals outside of the report itself, which indicates a reversal up until this point, maybe potentially a short term double top. And on top of that, we also have some very strong divergence, which is showing up on all 12 of our individual stocks, not to mention the top three US indices. So these are the trades that I'd much prefer instead of the actual Goldman Sachs type of trade continuation trigger. Just hoping that the market is going to levitate up and around these most recent highs, which we've established. So I mean, a really simple trade for Goldman Sachs would be the break of the low. Which, is, which has part of me established itself on Tuesday. Go through and do the risk and reward on this trade. Oftentimes when we break the low, we will come back down and there's another interesting gap over here. This was some, uh, some form of a breakaway gap. So we actually made the turn and then we got the gap. So this is an uh, identified or at least classified as a breakaway gap. And there's a very good chance that either IBM is going to see a bullish bounce first thing tomorrow try and close this gap, close the gap and then fade back down to this gap. Or we're going to see again, selling pressure continue and to break below these lows and move back down to this low. Now, a really simple way of putting this is that until the market actually rolls, until we see it break a short term swing low, I would encourage people to reconsider jumping into any overly bearish trades at the moment. The last thing you want to do is get stuck with a whipsaw trade when the market still hasn't confirmed our primary direction, the direction in which we're expecting this market to ultimately move. Sure, time is a bit of a problem at the moment because again, it seems as though we've been waiting some form of an eternity for this to happen, but I strongly believe that we are going to be compensated uh, more than enough when it does eventuate. Right now, the problem is, however, that when you're jumping into potentially bearish trade setups, you really want to see market confirmation, right? And right now, we simply just don't have it. I assume it's going to set up sooner rather than later, but that's a big sort of cautionary flag. You're really taking the chances, hypothetically, by placing a 142.20 bearish continuational entry. We are technically above the 200, which should act as short-term support, and we are above the uh, 100 simple moving average. So we are, in a way... Um, in sort of an accumulation phase, the 100 is below the 200. So this is long-term bearish. But if price breaks below this, again, it's more confirmation that we are moving down to about 126.50. I'd rather let it sort of uh, settle a little bit and just think about the long-term uh, potential on these markets in the form of hedging up and around these historic highs where we're currently trading at. Taking this one step further, once again, we got Netflix today. 
uh, down $14. So a major move. It was down, I think, 6 or between 5 and 7% pre-market. And we closed right on the lows. Have a look at this volume surge in Netflix as well. So we took a, an absolute beating today. Um, I was watching it a little bit when it was 99, 100 bucks, but as you can see, it closed at $94.34. Technically, we had this bearish entry down here at 96.61. No one obviously took this trade because this was a post earnings trade type of, uh, or, or, or looking at the trade before earnings was announced. But because we knew earnings was released on Tuesday, we had to take this trade off the tr off the table. So no one is actually in this at 96.61. But again, we're still looking at the same type of uh, continuational trade. Netflix and IBM are very bearish. They've got these nice breakaway gaps, or at least, pardon me, reversal gaps. But the problem is with these, with such bearish uh, breakaway gaps or reversal gaps, we need market confirmation. And even as I sit here and I have a pretty glim outlook uh, for the financial markets based on where we're trading at, and again, the technical deterioration, this is really chancing your luck by saying, look, I'm going to short this below 93.40. My target down here is 81.69. At best, you have to do just a simple risk and reward analysis on this. And you're looking at a stop up here at about 102. That's giving you about $8 of risk, which again is a lot. And considering we're looking at a downside projection of about $12 of potential profit, I'd rather sit Netflix out as well. Potentially, we come back up, fill the gap, and then we see the continuation to the downside. If that is the case, we'll have much better setup or we will have a much better setup back up at this gap fill. Ultimately, gaps close, right? So if we sort of um, use this theory with Netflix and IBM, probability dictates that we are going to see a bounce. We're going to come back up, close the gap. And once that gap is closed, then we generally see the continuation in the direction of the original open gap. So much like IBM, probability dictates that we'll come back up, we'll close the gap, that will offer a much better risk and reward type of trade setup, and then we'll catch the continuation or the major trend breakdown, which is most likely going to align with the overall financial markets. Applying this once again to the NASDAQ, this has been acting as a magnet. Okay, so as we've broken down in the month of January and we established the lows in February, we've been on this you know two-month bullish bounce to the upside. It's acting as a magnet. That is why I'm so interested to see the price action once we come up and start interacting at 5,000. I strongly believe this is the key, the final key to the financial markets. And once this gap fill is done, there is a very high probability that we are going to see the beginning of a major selling wave flood the US financial markets, okay? So just think about that again. Breadth is relatively weak. I can quickly bring up the Russell 2000. Also the Dow Jones Transportational Average. If I just zoom out and show you this trend, we're still making a series of macro lower highs. So we've got the high, lower high. Doesn't matter which one you look at. We've got a couple relative highs over here, but eventually support broke. We've established lower lows and we've run all the way back up into the declining bearish primary trend line. So I'm very interested to see if the Russell can hold these levels or if in fact we're going to see a uh, reversal take place. We are right at that declining 200 simple moving average as well. So if I highlight it for you, it looks as though we've just eked our head above it. But when I bring up the oscillating indicators again, you can see multiple points of negative divergence. The RSI has been showing divergence since the beginning of March. So has the stochastics. Also on top of that, have a look at volume. Ask yourself the question, is that volume uh, expanding or is this volume contracting? Just look at the slope of the volume. What direction is the volume moving in? I would argue that the majority are not on board with these multiple points of negative divergence and they're waiting for an opportunity to sell. I think that opportunity to sell is coming in with the gap fill on the NASDAQ. So that's why, again, I'm just referencing this NASDAQ and have been referencing this NASDAQ uh, market or particular market for quite some time. And again, the Dow Jones Transportation Average, potentially a short-term double top setting up. If we bring up Again, the oscillating indicators, you can see these multiple points of negative divergence. We have broken out to a short-term higher high relative to where we were in March. But you can see, again, the RSI is moving back up into oversold. And the MACD is just trying to turn bullish already from a relatively uh, strong type of standpoint. That is not what you want to see for a bullish continuation. If I also take you one step further and show you if my charting software wants to work for me, you want to pay attention to the CCI. The CCI has technically broken 
that 100 line. But what's most important are these relative highs over here coming in at 8,250. So if we can push on up and say, for instance, the NASDAQ does make that extra 60 points to the upside, that's probably going to coincide with the S&P and the Dow Jones Industrial Average rel uh, rallying relatively. But pay attention to what the Dow Jones Transportational does at 8,250. And of course, whether we see rejection on the Transportational Average, or pardon me, the Russell 2000 as well. Uh, given that we're coming back and back testing that declining 200 uh, simple moving average as well. So, I mean, a quick Tuesday afternoon market recap. But I mean, if you take into consideration these gaps, I mean, weakness, IBM weakness, Netflix weakness, and Goldman Sachs, I think, uh, produced its its weakest quarterly report since 2011. Sales were down, or at least revenues were down uh, more or less, I think, over 50% year over year. So, um, again, seeing a little bit of weakness in financials it has been or at least estimates on the whole were beaten but those estimates were pretty dire uh the main thing to consider again is that revenue sales are all down year over year and that's problematic when we're talking about valuations especially when the markets themselves are coming back up and retesting relative highs when again uh, the fundamental pe ratios again are declining we're seeing forward looking uh earnings expectations back down even below some of the lows which we established in August and January and February 2016. So think about that. I strongly believe that there's a big uh, divergence between where price is trading at now and where ultimately it's moving to. And to a degree, risk is on again for people buying this market up at these highs. Very, very risky thing to be doing right now. So Outside of that, enjoy your Tuesday evening, friends and traders around the world. It is James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. I'll be back later in the week to recap some other individual stocks as well, but they were the main ones uh, as at the close on Tuesday. All the best, everyone. Goodbye.